We have a real housing affordability crisis in this country. In 2000, the average rents in the United States were about $600 a month. Uh, by the time you got to 2020, the average rents were $1,400 a month. Now, that's uh, almost two and a half times as high. But on the other side, average incomes have not increased by the same rate. In this country, we've got unequal access to opportunities for economic mobility, uh, for educational mobility. Uh, we see really huge disparities in mental health, physical health. Uh, a lot of these disparities are grounded in unequal access to opportunity, and access to opportunity really starts with where folks live. Livability and quality of life requires uh, the ability of people to be able to be ad adequately housed. The Housing Solutions Lab will make an important contribution uh, to a very, very pressing problem we have in this nation. The Housing Solutions Lab really wants to fill a gap we know that larger cities may get a lot of the policy attention and of the research attention, but that a lot of the innovation going on in the field is happening among small and mid-sized cities. So we want to be able to be a resource to those places as they're pursuing more equitable housing goals um, and also build the evidence base about what's working in small and mid-sized cities. I am with the City of Boulder, Housing and Human Services, and the Housing Solutions Lab asked if the City of Boulder would want to be a member of the Peer Cities Housing Policy Network, which was a group of seven communities from across the country that work together and learn from each other on how to address our community's needs. We are able to work with cities providing data analysis or background research to help them understand how well things are working on the ground, measuring impacts and outcomes. We can tap in to what cities are needing and to start filling some of those those gaps. This is tough work. I mean, you're you're dealing with a variety of financial resources that are complicated. You're dealing with rules and regulations and need to understand the ins and outs of that. You're also dealing with a very um, emotionally charged issue in your community. When you're working with cities of this size or communities of this size, the resources and the staffing, um, while we're incredibly capable and have just immense capacity in our know-how and knowledge, our staffs are generally smaller. So. I would say that's probably the unique nature and really the value of this is it, it felt like we expanded our capacity sevenfold with seven different communities to hear from. Infrastructure in the 21st century includes housing, includes neighborhoods. This is about neighborhoods. Why do you invest in housing? Neighborhoods. Why do you invest in community facilities? Neighborhoods. Why do you invest in schools? Neighborhoods. People live in neighborhoods. I'm a big believer in building community, and a neighborhood is a community. And I think it, it requires public investment, it requires private investment, it requires human energy, it requires a dynamic role for non-governmental organizations and nonprofits. You know, a range of things, and I think the lab becomes a place where all of these dynamic ideas can be mined and evaluated and be a resource for people. It's been a great network for us to just learn from each other how to best be responsive to our housing needs of our communities.